other than stationary distribution one can find out the average measures also in the system. So, suppose uh, you make a E of n that is nothing but the average number of customers in the system in steady state. Since you know the probability distribution substitute a p pi n here therefore, n times pi n summation over n that is going to be the average number of customers in the system. If you do little simplification you will get a rho divided by 1 minus rho where rho is less than 1. So, this is the average number of customers in the system and also one can get a variance of the number of customers in the system also for that you have to find out the E of n square then using that formula you can get the variance of n also. So, here we are getting a mean and variance of number of customers in the system in steady state. Also one can fi find average number in the q. So, the, the letter q is a random variable and here we are finding the expectation of q that is average number of customers in the queue. That means, uh, before getting the service how many customers in the system we have only one server in the system and whenever the service is going on and all other arriving customers will be queued. That means, uh, when uh, n plus 1 customers in the system n people are in the queue therefore, summation n times pi n plus 1 do the simplification you will get average number of customers in the queue also. You substitute the pi n plus 1 from the one I have discussed in the stationary distribution. Here I am going to relate the average measures using the Little's law. This is proven by John Little 1961. This is valid for a any system in which arrival comes into the pattern with the arrival rate lambda and r is the time spent in the system and leave the system after the service or whatever the things are over. Then in a longer run one can say the arrival rate multiplied by the average time spent in the system that is same as average number in the system. So, this relation is a valid for whatever be the underlying distribution whatever be the underlying distribution of the service, underlying distribution of the arrival, what it says if you have a system in which uh, the arrival rate is a uh, mean arrival rate is lambda and the mean time spent in the system is a uh, expectation of r, then that product will give average number in the system. So, it's indirectly it, it says whenever the system has a long run in a stable system, the expectation of a average number of customers during the interval 0 to t as a t tends to infinity that is going to be have a limit expectation of a n and the arrival rate lambda of t that also has the mean arrival rate as a t tends to infinity that is also going to be a sum having a limit constant lambda and similarly, the average spent by the customers in the system at any time t and if you make a t tends to infinity that expectation quantity also has a limit. Therefore, you will have a lambda times a expectation of r is same as expectation of n. Now, using this little law, I am going to find out the the measures for the m on q model. So, suppose uh, r denotes the time spent in the system by the customer and w denotes the waiting time by any customer in the system, then I can use the Little's formula, the Little's law in the previous one. So, if I know the mean arrival rate and if I know mean number of customers in the system in a longer run, using these I can find out the average a time spent in the system. If I know to use the to use 
using Little's law, if I know the average number of customers in the system longer run and if I know the arrival rate, then I can find out the average time spent in the system in a longer run. Similarly, I can once I know the average time spent in the system, if I subtract the average time, time of my own service, then that is going to be the average time waiting in the queue. So, this is average time waiting in the queue that is same as the average time spent in the system minus my own average service time. In the MM1 Q model, the service time is exponentially distributed with the parameter mu, therefore the average is 1 by mu. So, the, the difference will give the average time waiting in the queue by any customer. Not only the average measures for the MM1 Q, one can find out the actual distribution for R as well as W also, because this is a very simplest Markovian queuing model. Whereas for all other models, it is little complicated, but still one can get it. So, this is the easy model in which you one can find out the distribution of uh, the time spent in the system as well as the time or as well as the waiting time by a customer in the queue. First, let us go for finding out the distribution of waiting time. Waiting time means uh, if uh, no one in the system when you arrive, then your waiting time is 0, you are immediately going to get the service. So, the service time is your uh, time spent in the system. Okay. Usually, the time spent in the system is uh, the time of your service plus the uh, time of uh, the waiting time. So, here I am finding the only the distribution of waiting time first. So, whenever the system is uh, 0, your waiting time is uh, 0 whenever no customer in the system, the waiting time is 0. Whenever more than or equal to one customer in the system, then the waiting time is same as the remaining uh, service time for the customer who is under service plus the customers in the queue before you join in the queue. So, those people service time addition plus uh, the residual or the remaining service time of the customer who the first customer who is under service. So, this total time is the waiting time whenever the system is non empty. Whenever the system is empty, then the waiting time is 0. Therefore, the w is a random variable either it takes a value 0 or it takes a value greater than 0 based on the times. Uh, time of uh, service of uh, previous uh, n people in the ahead of you. Therefore, w is a mixed random variable which has the probability mass function at uh, 0 as well as a density function between the interval 0 to infinity. So, let me try for finding out the CDF of this random variable. So, the CDF is going to be 0 till 0. At 0, it has the CDF 1 minus rho because when the waiting time is 0, that is equivalent of a no one in the system. So, in the long run, no one in the system that is a pi naught and the pi naught probability is a pi naught probability is 1 minus rho. The system is empty in a longer run that is 1 minus rho. Therefore, the CDF at 0 that is same as 1 minus rho of that is pi naught. Between the interval 0 to infinity, one we have to find out the distribution of W. Whenever n customers before you, before you join in the system, that conditional distribution, the distribution of a w given the number of customers in the system is n, that distribution is nothing but the service time of uh, the n customers. The first customer's remaining service time the service time of the first customer is exponential distribution. 
the residual or remaining uh, service time of the first customer that is also exponential distribution because of memoryless property. So, this is exponential distribution, this is uh, second customer service times that is exponential distribution and uh, similarly for the nth customer also the service time is exponential distributed and the way we made assumption all the service times are independent and each one is exponentially distributed with the parameter mu. Therefore, this is a sum of n independent exponentially distributed random variables. Therefore, the sum of n exponentials that is going to be a gamma distribution with the parameters n and mu. There are many ways of finding out the distribution, but here I am just explaining through the distribution concept this is sum of n independent exponential distribution therefore you can conclude it is gamma distribution with the parameter parameter c n and mu once you know the conditional distribution our interest is to find out the unconditional one that means if t is a greater than 0 and cdf at the point t that is nothing but what is the conditional density probability density and what is the probability of n customers in the system that multiplication with the possible n will give the CTF between the interval 0 to t. So, I have a density function of a gamma distribution probability density function with the parameters n and mu and this is a probability density function multiply and integration between 0 to t that will give the CTF and the condition unconditional uh, multiplied by probability of n customers in the system that with the summation that will give the unconditional. Therefore, the CDF is going to be a summation n is equal to 1 to infinity integration 0 to t of the probability density function of a gamma distribution multiplied by n customer in the system. If you do uh, simplification, you will get a uh, 1 minus uh, e power minus mu times 1 minus rho times t. Therefore, you can substitute here, oh here I made a mistake, so here it is multiplied by rho. So, 1 minus rho times 1 minus rho times So, 1 minus rho times e power minus rho e power minus mu times 1 minus rho that is going to be the so once you are getting the CDF you can conclude this is a mixed random variable with the probability mass at 0 is 1 minus rho and the density function between the interval 0 to infinity that is a rho times mu minus lambda times e power minus mu minus lambda times t that is a probability density function for a distribution of waiting time. Similarly, one can get the distribution of a response time also or the total time spent in the system. The total time spent in the system that is nothing but that is a random variable and the residual uh, service time of the first customer who is in the system plus all the remaining uh, n customers in the system in the queue plus your own service time. Therefore, here this is not a mixed random variable, this is a continuous random variable because your service time is a continuous random variable which is exponentially distributed. Therefore, the R is going to be sum of a your own service plus the remaining service of the first person in the system if and so on till the nth customer who is in the queue. Therefore, this is the CDF of the random variable or here also one can argue when n customer in the system before him who enter into the system that is a sum of a exponential independent random variable and so on. Therefore, this is going to be a gamma distribution with the parameters n plus 1 mu and for t greater than 0 find out the CDF using the 
first conditional then unconditional multiplied by 1 minus rho times rho power n summation over n is equal to 0 to infinity because there is a possibility no one in the system or one customer, two customer and so on therefore the running index is 0 to infinity. Do the simplification you will get 1 minus e power minus rho times this therefore you can substitute here and if you see the CDF is the same as the CDF of exponential distribution with a parameter that is mu times 1 minus rho. Therefore, you can conclude the total time spent in the system is exponentially distributed with the parameters mu times 1 minus rho. If you find out the average time that is going to be 1 divided by the parameter that is this. The same thing you got it in the average uh, response time from the Littles formula using uh, once you know the value of lambda and expected number in the system using Littles law you got uh, expectation of uh, time spent in the system that is same result. So, here we are getting first uh, finding the distribution of uh, time spent in the system or response time then we are finding the average time.